Why would the farmer put the plow in the ground in the spring if he couldn't see the vision of the harvest when the summer is finished? Is it possible to see the finished harvest? And the answer is yes. We do that simply by faith. Key phrase, faith is the ability to see things that don't yet exist. And that's how things exist. How did this hotel get here? Someone saw it while the property was vacant. You say, well, is it possible to see this hotel when it isn't here? And the answer is yes, of course. If somebody cannot see it when it is not here, then it will never be here. So it's possible to see things that don't yet exist. When should you start building this hotel? This is a good question for your philosophical musings. When should we start building the house? When should we start? And here's the answer. As soon as it's finished. You wouldn't start building the house until you had it finished. If you just started laying bricks and somebody came around and said, what are you doing? And said, I'm just laying bricks and said, what are you building? And you said, I have no idea. See, they'll take you away to a safe place. So have you got that now? It's possible to finish something before you start. In fact, it would be a bit foolish to start until you had it finished. So human beings have this remarkable ability to finish something and then start it. We've heard the old expression, don't count your chickens until they're hatched. Say, no, we have the ability to count our chickens long before they're hatched. Because we know, we have faith, we believe. We use the law of averages. There's, there's bound to be at least so many. Out of every dozen, out of every hundred, out of every fifty. So it's possible to see the end, then begin. Start looking into the future of what you would like to accomplish, and where you would like to go, the person you would like to be. And see if you can't get a better picture of the finished objective. See yourself there. See yourself in possession of. I was in business with Bob Cummings, the old movie star, for a while. He said, decide what you want and then act as if you already had it. And being an actor, he could give us a few tips on acting. Decide what you want and act as if it was already yours. Now, the reason we can act thinking that it's already ours is because not only can we vision the end results, we can also vision the beginning of making it real. So we don't start till it's finished, but it is possible for human beings to finish something before they start. Human beings are the only life on earth that has this incredible capacity to change the course of your life. No other life form can do that. Every other life form except human seems to operate simply by instinct and the genetic code. In the winter, the goose flies south. How often? Answer, every winter. If you said to the goose, hey, it'd be better this year to go west, he ignores that advice. And the reason is because he cannot make choices and listen to advice of something that might be better. He has to obey instinct and the genetic code. But now jot this down, not human beings. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that script, live a totally different way the next five years. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, how did you do that? Here's number one. I discovered I was not a goose. Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years? And jot this down. No. No, you don't have to live the second six years like the first six. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six. No other life form can do this. See, if you were a tree, you'd be stuck. As a tree, if you used up all the nourishment that was around you and you couldn't change location, see, you would die. But that's not true. Human beings can change location, go north, south, east, west, live here for a while, live somewhere else for a while. So that's a note to make. You can greatly alter the course of your life. Now, here's the next note to make. Five years from now, you will arrive. The question is where? This is for mature people now. If you keep up your present disciplines and keep up the present pace that you're on, where will you be in five years? Boy, it's easy to say, hey, I haven't really thought about that. So now make this note. In five years, here's the probability. You will either arrive at a well-designed destination or an undesigned destination. 
well-designed or undesigned. And I promise you, five years from now, you, you really don't want to arrive at an undesigned destination. Because you may very well wind up wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, living where you don't want to live, maybe doing what you don't want to do. Simply because you didn't design a better destination. Key phrase, up front, the decisions are easy. Now, sometimes after we've lived a few years now to repair our mistakes and get back on track, seems like a tough job. If you've messed up your health for 10 years, I'm telling you, it takes more than 10 days to get it back. But here's the key, and it's so exciting to talk to the teenagers. Make the note, if you start early, the fortune belongs to you. If you start early, all fortunes that are available to humans, if you start early, the promise looms large and the odds are heavy in your favor. Now, yes, it's possible to do some radical things starting late and still arrive with some good treasures and some good things. But when you haven't got that much time left, now sometimes the decision has to be so drastic people are not willing to make it and they're too tired and too weary and too ill and say, look, I don't have much time left. It's not going to happen for me anyway. It's easy to take that attitude. But everyone here, we've got the time over the next 10 years. We've got the time the next 20 years. We've got the time the next 30 years to make some repair now in our errors of the past and set up some new disciplines. And I'm telling you, that's going to change everything. So five years from now, I wish for you to arrive at a well-designed place, a place of productivity, a place that will make you feel good about yourself, a place that will give you honor and respect, a place that will give you influence to touch other people five years from now that you couldn't do today. Where will you be in five years? Key phrase, we go the direction we face. We go the direction we face. If you start designing something at the end of this direction, sure enough, you will start going the direction you face. And we face the direction we design. Next phrase, direction determines destination. Destination is not determined by hope. It's not determined by wish. Destination is determined by direction. You cannot change destination overnight. You cannot change destination overnight, which means you can't arrive at a five years from now place tomorrow. But here's what you can change today and overnight. You can change direction. And it is so fascinating what a little small change of direction will do. Let's say that you're here and you're headed this way. And five years from now, you'll wind up here. But here's how we individually can arrive at a new destination. Maybe right now by discipline or lack of discipline or direction, you're headed this way. But it wouldn't take much to change direction and head this way. So that in five years, you wind up here instead of here. And the difference now of getting off this track and getting on this track is not much. A few decisions in discipline, a few decisions in learning, a few decisions in change of behavior, change of habit, a few decisions in setting goals that you've sort of let drift before. Like I did at age 25, didn't have a list. I immediately started to change that. And I immediately started to change my direction so that very quickly I started heading this direction. In less than seven years, I was a millionaire. And that was just my economics. And sure enough, when I met my mentor, I was headed this way. And here's where I would have been in five or six years. Maybe okay. You know, my kids probably wouldn't have been starving. And maybe, you know, we got clothes to wear and a place to live. But the joy of productivity and the joy of becoming valuable to the marketplace and more valuable to my family and valuable to my friends in my inner circle, all of that probably would have escaped me if I would have kept going this way. But I am so thankful for the circumstances and whatever else arranged it for me. Some things are arranged. We don't even know how they've occurred for you to be here. Do you imagine the chain of circumstances that caused you to be able to sit in this auditorium today? It's amazing. This had to happen and this had to happen and this door had to close and this door had to open. And all of those things for me to be here, for you to be here, 
I just didn't drop out of the sky, right? And you arrived here from all kinds of directions. Here we are. And so we just say, wow, part of that's a mystery and we let it be a mystery. We don't even try to figure it out. We just say, wow, it's incredible. But now that we're here, how could we collectively and individually affect each other's lives? It's by doing just what we've done. Study, learn, teach, shake hands, trade stories, and do all this stuff. So that we can help other people as well as ourselves to make that small journey to a new direction. So jot that down. It's only a small journey to a new direction. Guess how quickly you can change your health? By starting to eat an apple a day. Mama said an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Let's say you've been ill long enough and you've had health problems long enough and you say, that's it. That's over. I'm going to now start a program. You don't have to really revolutionize your whole health life. Just start with an apple a day. You say, well, is it that simple to change your health life? And the answer is yes. The key is just to start. You know, you pick up a book on good health and you get halfway through the book and it says, now, dear reader, set this book aside, fall down on the floor and see how many push-ups you can do. And then it goes on to say, and if you have not done that, why not give this book away? It looks like you're not going to do it. Come on, you don't have to radically do something. You can gain momentum and make changes as you go. Just start. Here's what happens when you start a new direction. Self-esteem starts to accelerate. It doesn't take much for you to feel good about yourself. Just commit it to a new direction and you feel good. And an apple a day committed to finally having a health program that'll make you the healthiest you've ever been in the next 20 years. All you got to do is munch on that first apple and nobody even has to be around you and you don't have to announce it to the world. But you munch on that first apple and say, this is the beginning of developing a health program that's going to make me so healthy. I'll have the vitality to do whatever I want to do for the next 30 years of my life. Munch, munch, happy, happy, self-esteem off the scale. Now, if you eat an apple the second day, you become almost delirious. <laughs> saying, wow, I'm on my way. Somebody said, just two apples? Says, look, you don't understand. Not only did I do it yesterday, I've done it again today. This is really proving to myself with no audience, no microphones, no nothing, just you and yourself. You've convinced yourself, I'm on my way to the healthiest I ever have been. I'm starting a new life. This is the second day I'm on my way. That's how easy it is to change your life. You don't need some dramatic vision. Just begin something. And maybe by health or by whatever other things we can think of to do, you just get back on a better track. Okay? It's a small journey to changing direction.